Peace and blessings. Thank you for joining Tribe Bukurim on this daily prayer and Bible reading journey. We will read through the Bible using the one-year Bible reading plan and end in prayer. Today is July 30th, and we will be reading from 2 Chronicles chapter 26 verses 1 through 23, chapter 27 verses 1 through 9, and chapter 28 verses 1 through 27, Romans chapter 13 verses 1 through 14, Psalm chapter 23 verses 1 through 6, and Proverbs chapter 20 verse 11. Let's begin. 2 Chronicles chapter 26 verses 1 through 23. Uzziah reigns in Judah. All the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the place of his father Amaziah. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah. After that, the king slept with his fathers. Sixteen years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty-two years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. He did that which was right in the eyes of Yahweh, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. He set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the vision of God. And as long as he sought Yahweh, God made him to prosper. Uzziah's Victories He went forth and warred against the Philistines, and broke down the wall of Gath, and the wall of Jabne, and the wall of Ashdod. And he built cities in the country of Ashdod, and among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines, and against the Arabians who lived in Gerbaal, and the Meunim. The Ammonites gave tribute to Uzziah, and his name spread abroad, even to the entrance of Egypt, for he grew exceeding strong. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and at the turning of the wall, and fortified them. He built towers in the wilderness, and dug out many cisterns, for he had much livestock, in the lowland also, and in the plain, and he had farmers and vineyard keepers in the mountains and in the fruitful fields for he loved farming. Moreover, Uzziah had an army of fighting men who went out to war by bands, according to the number of their reckoning made by Jeiel the scribe and Maaseah the officer, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. The whole number of the heads of fathers' houses, even the mighty men of valor, was two thousand and six hundred. Under their hand was an army, three hundred thousand and seven thousand and five hundred, who made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. Uzziah prepared for them, even for all the army, shields and spears and helmets and coats of mail and bows and stones for slinging. He made in Jerusalem engines invented by skillful men to be on the towers and on the battlements with which to shoot arrows and great stones. His name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped until he was strong. Uzziah's Pride, Leprosy, Death But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up so that he did corruptly, and he trespassed against Yahweh his God. For he went into the temple of Yahweh to burn incense on the altar of incense, Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him eighty priests of Yahweh, who were valiant men. And they resisted Uzziah the king, and said to him, It isn't for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to Yahweh, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. Neither shall it be for your honor from Yahweh God. Then Uzziah was angry and he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was angry with the priests, the leprosy broke forth in his forehead before the priests in the house of Yahweh, beside the altar of incense. Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked on him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out quickly from there. Yes, himself Herod also to go out, because Yahweh had struck him. Uzziah the king was a leper to the day of his death, 
and lived in a separate house, being a leper, for he was cut off from the house of Yahweh. And Jotham his son was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Isaiah, first and last, did Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, write. So Isaiah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the field of burial, which belonged to the kings. For they said, He is a leper. Jotham his son reigned in his place. Second Chronicles chapter 27 verses 1 through 9 Jotham's good reign in Judah Jotham was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. He did that which was right in the eyes of Yahweh, according to all that his father Uzziah had done. However, he didn't enter into the temple of Yahweh. The people did yet corruptly. He built the upper gate of the house of Yahweh, and on the wall of Ophel he built much. Moreover, he built cities in the hill country of Judah, and in the forests he built castles and towers. He fought also with the king of the children of Ammon, and prevailed against them. The children of Ammon gave him the same year one hundred talents of silver, and ten thousand measures of wheat, and ten thousand of barley. So much did the children of Ammon render to him, in the second year also, and in the third. So Jotham became mighty, because he ordered his ways before Yahweh his God. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham, and all his wars, and his ways, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was five and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. Jotham slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Ahaz, his son, reigned in his place. Second Chronicles chapter 28 verses 1 through 27 Ahaz reigns wickedly in Judah. Ahaz was twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And he didn't do that which was right in the eyes of Yahweh, like David his father. But he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, and made also molten images for the Baals. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and burnt his children in the fire, according to the abominations of the nations whom Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Judah defeated by Syria. Therefore Yahweh his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria, and they struck him, and carried away of his a great multitude of captives, and brought them to Damascus. He was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who struck him with a great slaughter. For Pekah, the son of Remaliah, killed in Judah 120,000 in one day, all of them valiant men because they had forsaken Yahweh, the God of their fathers. Zechri, a mighty man of Ephraim, killed Maaseah, the king's son, and Azricam, the ruler of the house, and Elkanah, who was next to the king. The children of Israel carried away captive of their brothers 200,000 women, sons, and daughters, and took also away much spoil from them, and brought the spoil to Samaria. But a prophet of Yahweh was there, whose name was Oded. And he went out to meet the army that came to Samaria, and said to them, Behold, because Yahweh, the God of your fathers, was angry with Judah, he has delivered them into your hand, and you have slain them in a rage which has reached up to heaven. Now you purpose to keep under the children of Judah and Jerusalem for bond servants and bond maids for yourselves. Aren't there even with you trespasses of your own against Yahweh your God? Now hear me, therefore, and send back the captives that you have taken captive from your brothers, for the fierce wrath of Yahweh is on you. Then some of the heads of the children of Ephraim, Azariah the son of Johanan, Berechiah the son of Meshillamoth, 
and Jehizkiah, the son of Shalom, and Amasa, the son of Hadlai, stood up against those who came from the war and said to them, You shall not bring in the captives here, for you purpose that which will bring on us a trespass against Yahweh, to add to our sins and to our trespass. For our trespass is great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the assembly. The men who have been mentioned by name rose up and took the captives, and with the spoil clothed all who were naked among them, dressed them, gave them sandals, and gave them something to eat and to drink, anointed them, carried all the feeble of them on donkeys, and brought them to Jericho, the city of palm trees, to their brothers. Then they returned to Samaria. Compromise with Assyria At that time, King Ahaz sent to the kings of Assyria to help him. For again the Edomites had come and struck Judah and carried away captives. The Philistines also had invaded the cities of the lowland and of the south of Judah, and had taken Beth Shemesh, and Ajalon, and Gedaroth, and Soko with its towns, and Timnah with its towns, Gimzo also and its towns. And they lived there, for Yahweh brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel. For he had dealt wantonly in Judah, and trespassed severely against Yahweh. Tilgath Pilneser, king of Assyria, came to him, and distressed him, but didn't strengthen him. For Ahaz took away a portion out of the house of Yahweh, and out of the house of the king and of the princes, and gave it to the king of Assyria, but it didn't help him. Ahaz's Idolatry In the time of his distress did he trespass yet more against Yahweh, this same king, Ahaz. For he sacrificed to the gods of Damascus, which struck him. And he said, Because the gods of the kings of Syria helped them, so I will sacrifice to them, that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God, and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God, and shut up the doors of the house of Yahweh. And he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem, in every city of Judah he made high places to burn incense to other gods and provoked to anger Yahweh, the God of his fathers. Hezekiah succeeds Ahaz in Judah. Now the rest of his acts and all his ways, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Ahaz slept with his fathers and they buried him in the city even in Jerusalem, for they didn't bring him into the tombs of the kings of Israel. And Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his place. Romans chapter 13 verses 1 through 14. Let every soul be in subjection to the higher authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those who exist are ordained by God. Therefore, he who resists the authority withstands the ordinance of God, and those who withstand will receive to themselves judgment. For rulers are not a terror to the good work, but to the evil. Do you desire to have no fear of the authority? Do that which is good, and you will have praise from the authority, for he is a servant of God to you, for good. But if you do that which is evil, be afraid, for he doesn't bear the sword in vain, for he is a servant of God an avenger for wrath to him who does evil. Therefore, you need to be in subjection, not only because of the wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For this reason you also pay taxes, for they are servants of God's service, continually doing this very thing. Therefore, give everyone what you owe. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If customs, then customs. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandments there are, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
Love doesn't harm a neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Do this, knowing the time, that it is already time for you to awaken out of sleep. For salvation is now nearer to us than when we first believed. The night is far gone, and the day is near. Let's, therefore, throw off the deeds of darkness, and let's put on the armor of light. Let's walk properly, as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and lustful acts, and not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh, for its lust. Psalm chapter 23 verses 1 through 6 A Psalm by David Yahweh is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in Yahweh's house forever. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 11 even a child makes himself known by his doings, whether his work is pure and whether it is right. Lord, we thank you for being our provider. You hide us under the shadow of your wings and love us with an everlasting love. All glory belongs to you, our God and King. We recognize you in your power and ask your forgiveness for anything we have said, done, or thought that was unpleasing to you. Create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits within us. Bless us with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, maturity, discernment, and focused minds. Take away any thoughts or feelings that are not in alignment with you. Open our eyes to the wonderful things of your law and make it an engrafted word in us. May we live lives according to your will. Denounce our sinful nature. Lay our sins at your feet and walk in obedience to you for your glory. Almighty God, we know that you are our eternal source and reign above all. May we always remember that although we are in this world, we are not of it. In all that we do, may we do it to your glory. May we be good stewards over all that you have given us and never forget who we are in you. We present our bodies as living sacrifices to you and ask that you make us aware of your presence and what you are doing in the earth today. Cover us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Keep our physical bodies, our nation, Homes, modes of transportation, places of employment, bank accounts, credit and investments and communities safe from all hurt, harm and danger. Expose and obliterate anything that dares to come against your people. Bring complete and total healing to our minds, emotions and bodies. May your perfect will be done in the earth. We pray this prayer over ourselves and everyone connected to us in the matchless name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. May the Shalom peace of God follow you for the rest of your days.